Kaiju number eight is the perfect monster anime, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. If you've never heard about it before, Kaiju number eight is set in a world where Japan is constantly under the threat from monstrous kaiju. Yeah, like we've never heard that before. I genuinely think this show might have the best start to an action anime I have seen in years. Because in the first couple of episodes, the main character went from dreaming of joining Japan's defense force to fight the kaiju, to becoming a kaiju himself. And that, mi familia, is one of the major keys that makes this show so damn good. You deliver a saucy preview of what we're going to see early on when it comes to the characters and how overpowered the MC might be, and then you embrace the art of the build-up. I want to see Kafka master those powers full-on Rocky Balboa style to become the equivalent of an Elden Ring boss that decided to take up stand-up comedy on the side. The first five episodes make this show stand out, and it truthfully becomes one of the best monster anime we've ever seen for several reasons. First off, it's breathing new life into the monster genre with its fresh perspective. As soon as I read the first volume of the manga, I was like, huh, they're essentially trying to blend Pacific Rim and Attack on Titan. Except, I don't have to see my therapist every time that I finish an episode. The protagonist's transformation into a kaiju is both a literal and a metaphorical journey. I mean, bro, his name is Kafka. You, we can read between the lines, you know, like the author that wrote Metamorphosis. Never mind, moving on. The MC's journey is exploring what it means to be human and a monster simultaneously. That duality is everything that I'm looking for as a lore freak. It's mwa perfecto. And it's adding a unique layer of complexity to the story, which I am definitely digging. Thematically, this is huge. We have a dude that has spent his entire life wishing that he was in the front lines, in the room where it happens. But he keeps taking L's trying to do so. And just when you see him get ready to try one last time for the redemption shot, surprise shoddy, you're turning into the same thing that you swore to destroy. How are you gonna deal with that? I have a bad feeling about this. In all seriousness though, one of the major strengths of this show is its character development. Kafka's struggles are hugely relatable and they're easy to resonate with as a viewer. He's just a guy trying to accomplish his dream, impress the girl, and figure out what it means to be human while becoming a monster in real time. But it is not just him, oh no siree. Mina, the girl that he likes, has an unwavering resolve to destroy all of the kaiju and stop all the constant destruction. And then you have Reno, who is constantly trying to get our MC to not fuck up. His Pikachu-esque loyalty also boosts the strength of the story because they are offering diverse perspectives on the fight against the kaiju. One person wants to beat all of the Sonic rings out of every single kaiju on site. And the other one is like, uh, wait a minute, girly, my home Tommy can help us do that, he's already one of them. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a perfect anime overall. That price only applies to One Piece. But if I had to point out its biggest flaw, it's the change in visual style for the human character's designs. The kaiju all look fantastic, and the animation quality is elite, but Production IG, the studio behind the animation, did the character designs dirty in a really subtle way that makes them seem a little bit less detailed. Just by taking a quick peek at these panels from the manga, you can see that it is known for its intricate line work the sharp looking faces and the killer poses. And the show does deliver a solid adaptation, but the facial structures seem to be a little bit more smoothed out and rounded. I don't know, they just threw me off a little bit. Let me know what you think on that specifically, because I can't be the only one that thinks this. With that said, I don't think this knocks the show down a peg. Yeah, it is a compromise. But with that different style, we get elite high quality animation and a saucy story. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Every punch, kick, and speed blitz is fluid as fuck. And it has me on the edge of my seat at the end of every episode, because the teaser clickbait at the end is for the next episode gets wilder and wilder with every single one. It's laying a solid foundation for an exciting and emotionally engaging series. So I think if you're looking for something that's new and interesting to watch this anime season, this one is a definite lock, along with solo leveling and My Hero Academia Season 7. Because that balance between humor, action, and introspection into the human psyche makes it the perfect monster anime. If you're still watching this video at this point, make sure to like the video and subscribe, baby. Mwah, I love you. And what are your thoughts on the series so far? I'm gonna wait for you down in the comments. I'll see you on the next one.